Andre Marie Chénier, the 30th of October 1762 to the 25th of July 1794, was a French poet of Greek and Franco-Levantine origin, associated with the events of the French Revolution of which he was a victim. His sensual, emotive poetry marks him as one of the precursors of the Romantic movement. His career was brought to an abrupt end when he was guillotined for supposed crimes against the state, just three days before the end of the Reign of Terror. Chénier's life has been the subject of Umberto Giordano's opera Andrea Chénier and other works of art. Life Chénier was born in the Galata district of Constantinople. His family home, destroyed in a fire, was located on the site of the present saint pierre Han, in today's Karakoy neighborhood of Istanbul. His father, Louis Chénier, a native of Languedoc, after 20 years in the Levant as a cloth merchant, was appointed to a position equivalent to that of French consul at Constantinople. His mother, Elisabeth Santi Lamaca, whose sister was grandmother of Adolphe Thiers, was of Greek origins. When André was three years old, his father returned to France, and from 1768 to 1775 served as consul general of France in Morocco. The family, of which André was the third son, and Marie-Joseph the fourth, remained in France, and after a few years, during which André was given his youthful freedom while living with an aunt in Carcassonne, a square in Carcassonne is named to commemorate him. He distinguished himself as a verse translator from the classics at the Collège de Navarre in Paris. In 1783 Chénier enlisted in a French regiment at Strasbourg, but the novelty soon wore off. He returned to Paris before the end of the year, was well received by his family, and mixed in the cultivated circle which frequented his mother's salon, including Le Brun Pindare, Antoine Lavoisier, Jean-François Lesseur, Claude Joseph Dorat, and, a little later, the painter Jacques-Louis David. Chénier had already decided to become a poet, and worked in the neoclassical style of the time. He was especially inspired by a 1784 visit to Rome, Naples, and Pompeii. For nearly three years, he studied and experimented in verse without any pressure or interruption from his family. He wrote mostly idols and bucolics, imitated to a large extent from Theocritus, Bion of Smyrna and the Greek anthologists. Among the poems written or at least sketched during this period were Laoristes, La Vogel, La Jeune Melode, Bacchus, Euphrosyne and La Jeune Tarentine. He mixed classical mythology with a sense of individual emotion and spirit. Apart from his idols and his elegies, Chénier also experimented with didactic and philosophic verse, and when he commenced his Hermes in 1783 his ambition was to condense the Encyclopédie of Denis Diderot into a long poem somewhat after the manner of Lucretius. Now extant only in fragments, this poem was to treat of man's place in the universe, first in an isolated state, and then in society. Another fragment called L'Invention sums up Chénier's thoughts on poetry. De nouvelles pensées, façons des vers antiques. From new thoughts, let us make antique verses. Chénier remained unpublished. In November 1787 an opportunity for a fresh career presented itself. The Chevalier de la Luzerne, a friend of the Chénier family, had been appointed ambassador to Britain. When he offered to take André with him as his secretary, André knew the offer was too good to refuse, but was unhappy in England. He bitterly ridiculed. Ces Anglais. Nation tout a vendre a qui payet la payer. De contre en contre allant au monde entier, offrir sa joie ignoble et son fast grossier. Translation These English. A nation for sale to whoever can pay for it. Going from country to country and out to the whole world, offering its ignoble joy and its coarse splendor. Although John Milton and James Thomson seem to have interested him, and a few of his verses show slight inspiration from Shakespeare and Thomas Gray, it would be an exaggeration to say Chénier studied English literature, the events of 1789 and the startling success of his younger brother, Marie Joseph, as political playwright and pamphleteer, concentrated all his thoughts upon France. In April 1790 he could stand London no longer, and once more joined his parents at Paris in the Rue de Clary. France was on the verge of anarchy. A monarchy and believing in a constitutional monarchy for France, Chénier believed that the revolution was already complete and that all that remained to be done was the inauguration of the reign of law. Though his political viewpoint was moderate, his tactics were dangerously aggressive, he abandoned his gentle idols to write poetical satires. His prose, Avis au pupil français, 
the 24th of August 1790 was followed by the rhetorical jeu de pomme a somewhat declamatory moral ode occasioned by the tennis court oath addressed to the radical painter Jacques Louis David. In the meantime, Chénier orated at the Fouillance Club, and contributed frequently to the Journal de Paris from November 1791 to July 1792, when he wrote his scorching iams to Jean Marie Collet d'Herbois, Sur les Suisses Revoltes du Regiment de Chateauvieux. The insurrection of 10 August 1792 uprooted his party, his paper and his friends, and he only escaped the September massacres by staying with relatives in Normandy. In the month following these events his brother, Marie Joseph, had entered the anti-monarchical national convention. André raged against all these events, in such poems as Oda Charlotte Corday congratulating France that Un scelera de moines ramp dans set fang. One scoundrel less creeps in this mire. At the request of Malesherbes, the defence counsel to King Louis XVI, Chénier provided some arguments for the king's defence. After the king's execution, Chénier sought a secluded retreat on the plateau de Satori at Versailles and only went out after nightfall. There he wrote the poems inspired by Fanny, Mi Laurent Le Culto, including the exquisite Ode of Versailles. His solitary life at Versailles lasted nearly a year. On the 7th of March 1794, he was arrested at the house of Mi Piscatori at Passy. Two obscure agents of the Committee of Public Safety one of them named Nicholas Gennot were in search of a marquise who had fled, but an unknown stranger was found in the house and arrested on suspicion of being the aristocrat they were searching for. This was Chénier, who had come on a visit of sympathy. Chénier was taken to the Luxembourg Palace and afterwards to the prison saint Lazare. During the 140 days of his imprisonment he wrote a series of iams in alternate lines of twelve and eight syllables denouncing the convention, which hiss and stab like poisoned bullets," and which were smuggled to his family by a jailer. In prison he also composed his most famous poem, Jeune Captive, a poem at once of enchantment and of despair, inspired by the misfortunes of his fellow captive the Duchess de Fleury, née Aimé de Coigny. Ten days before Chénier's death, the painter Joseph Benoit Souvé completed the well-known portrait of him, shown in the box above. Chénier might have been overlooked but for the well-meant, indignant officiousness of his father. Marie Joseph did his best to prevent his brother's execution, but he could do nothing more. Maximilien Robespierre, who was himself in dangerous straits, remembered Chénier as the author of the venomous verses in the Journal de Paris and had him hauled before the Revolutionary Tribunal, which sentenced him to death. Chénier was one of the last people executed by Robespierre. At sundown, Chénier was taken by tumbrel to the guillotine at what is now the Place de la Nation. He was executed along with Françoise Thérèse de Choiseul Stainville, Princess Joseph de Monaco, on a charge of conspiracy. Robespierre was seized and executed only three days later. Chénier, aged 31 at his execution, was buried in the Cimetière de Picpus. Works <laughs> 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 During Chénier's lifetime only his Jeu de Pomme and Him sur les Suisses had been published. For the most part, then, his reputation rests on his posthumously published work, retrieved from oblivion page by page. The Jeune Captive appeared in the Décade Philosophique, on 9 January 1795, La Jeune Tarentine in the Mercure de France of the 22 March 1801. François-René de Chateaubriand quoted three or four passages in his Génie du Christianisme. Fayol and Jules Lefebvre Dumier also gave a few fragments, but it was not until 1819 that an attempt was made by Henri de Latouche to collect the poems in a substantive volume, from manuscripts retained by Marie-Joseph Chénier. Many more poems and fragments were discovered after Latouche's publication, and were collected in later editions. Latouche also wrote an account of Chénier's last moments. Critical opinions of Chénier have varied wildly. He experimented with classical precedents rendered in French verse to a much greater extent than other 18th century poets. On the other hand, the ennui and melancholy of his poetry recalls Romanticism. In 1828, Charles Augustin Saint Beuve praised Chénier as a heroic forerunner of the Romantic movement and a precursor of Victor Hugo. Chénier, he said, had inspired and determined romanticism many other critics also wrote about chenier as modern and proto-romantic however anatole france contests saint buvet's theory he claims that chenier's poetry is one of the last expressions of 18th century classicism 
His work should not be compared to Hugo and the Parnassian poets, but to philosophies like André Morillet. Paul Morillet has argued that judged by the usual test of 1820s Romanticism love for strange literature of the North, medievalism, novelties and experiments, Chénier would have been excluded from Romantic circles. The poet José María de Heredia held Chénier in great esteem, saying, I do not know in the French language a more exquisite fragment than the 300 verses of the Boucaliques, and agreeing with Saint Buvet's judgment that Chénier was a poet ahead of his time. Chénier has been very popular in Russia, where Alexander Pushkin wrote a poem about his last hours based on Latouche and Ivan Kozlov translated La Jeune Captive, La Jeune Tarantine and other famous pieces. Chénier has also found favor with English-speaking critics, for instance, his love of nature and of political freedom has been compared to Shelley, and his attraction to Greek art and myth recalls Keats. Chénier's fate has become the subject of many plays, pictures and poems, notably in the opera Andrea Chénier by Umberto Giordano, the epilogue by Sully Prudhomme, the stello by Alfred de Vigny, the delicate statue by Denis Puech in the Luxembourg, and the well-known portrait in the center of Muller's Last Days of the Terror. See also 1793 Chénier Act on «Right of the Author» French alternative concept to Anglo-Saxon copyright Legacy The Rue André Chénier in Aix-en-Provence is named for him. <laughs>